Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. It's obviously Sunday, and what's on Sunday, I've, if you've been around, you know that we, uh, we do a Bible study slash devotional every Sunday, and we've been going through the book of John, and in the book of John, we are in John chapter 14. All right, in John chapter 14, we're going to start at verse 12, okay? It's in, this, in this portion of the scripture, um, we're going through a period of time after the Last Supper, Jesus is essentially preparing his disciples for his death okay um he's what i would what i would do, say here is that it's a summary <laughs> final instructions of his teaching for his disciples a summary of his final of his teachings the final instructions um and just final preparation in general for his disciples and the hard times they're going to face after his death when the three days without him okay so in john chapter 14 we're going to start in verse 12 and Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. In verse 14, he says, you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. All right, so here Jesus is saying, look, if you love me, you'll obey what I command, which by the way is um, essential. <laughs> All right, that if you love Jesus, you do what he says, right? And that's, um, and his command was previously in the scriptures, he said, Love one another as I've loved you. And he said, "That's I give you a new command for you to love each other, and that you must love one another because that's how everybody's going. That's how everybody's going to know that you're my disciples if you love each other. So that's what he's saying. If you love me, you're going to do what I do, what I command, do what I want you to do, which is just love each other. <laughs> Simply love each other because love's never done any harm, right? It doesn't. Love doesn't do any wrong. It doesn't do harm. So there, obviously, love me, do what I say. Um, but right." <laughs> We'll clarify some things, okay? And there's there's a few things I want to kind of clean up, speak about. Um, we know that the Bible is perfect. Uh, the scriptures are what they are what they are, okay? That's exactly what it is. There's nothing. There's no. There's nothing added. Nothing taken away. Whatever. It's it's all. It's perfect. It's the. Um, it's the perfect word of God, you know. And but it doesn't mean that grammar is correct or the punctuational is correct okay <laughs> so that's kind of where it looks at right here is that or what we're looking at right here is that he says i tell you the truth anyone who has faith in me will do what i've been doing period okay he will do even greater things than these because i'm going to the father period possibly that should be he will do even greater things than these because i'm going to the father comma verse 13 it says and i will do whatever you ask in my name so he's saying, I'm going to my father, I'm going to the father, and I'll do whatever you ask in my name. That's how you're going to do greater things than these. Not, you're going to do greater things than these, and I'm going to the father. You know, no, you're going to do greater things than these because I'm going to the father, right? And I will do whatever you ask in my name there. So it should be one full sentence. Okay, that's, it kind of makes it weird, but that's... Personally, that's how I view it. That's how I'm reading it. Is so, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. You know, and so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. I feel like there should be one sentence, not period, and. You know, that that's that's just me reading it because Angela and I got this joke right. <laughs> Punctuation makes a big deal in what you're saying. <laughs> so, hopefully, y'all get the joke. I know Angela's gonna laugh at this because we've been talking about it just recently. You could say, let's eat, comma, grandpa, and that just it means one thing. But if you say, let's eat grandpa, period, it means a totally different thing, <laughs> right? I mean, that, that comma makes a big difference. Because you one thing is just, hey, me, let's eat, let's eat grandpa. Another thing is, hey, grandpa, sorry about your luck, right? But, that, sorry, sorry about it, Angela. I know you're laughing at me. But it just, punctu punctuation makes a big deal and changes how things are read and how they're understood sometimes. So it's possible that punctuation may be messed up here in the translation because the, the original text doesn't have punctuation. Okay, let's, let's, be, let's be very uh, understanding of that. The original text does not have punctuation. So 
punctuation is added by the English language, okay? And so possibly we should read that just a little a little different. I don't think it means anything different necessarily, but it's going to read differently, okay? And maybe it'll be understood differently. And so then he said, okay, if you love me, obey what I command. We covered that, all right? Just love. If you love God, you'll love each other, okay? And he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. The King James says comforter, whatever, neither... The Bible wasn't written in English language. Let's be real about that. So this is all translated to English. Um, so, and I'll give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because he neither knows him nor sees him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So Holy Spirit is what it's talking about. So look, I'm going to go to the Father. I'll do what you ask. I'll do whatever you ask. And, you know, and I'll give you the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be with you and in you forever. What Jesus is talking about in this short script, in this short passage, this section, to me, is not a quid quo pro type thing. Okay, it's not a you do this, I'm gonna do this, and I'm only gonna do this if you do this. You know, it's more of a the Holy Spirit inside of you should bring everything in your life into synergy with God. All right. So the Holy Spirit inside of you motivates you and is your driving force into operating as God would want you to operate. It's your driving force into loving the way Jesus wants you to love is everything. Without the Holy Spirit inside of you, you're not connected to God. He's here, he's there, but that's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit makes him here, okay? This is where the Trinity is very important, all right? The Holy Spirit is God inside of you. It is God on this earth. It is, it is the force of God around us and in you. It is the motivating power inside of your heart. You are just human, a sinful human, mind you, without the Holy Spirit in you. This is very critical. Okay, this is very critical that the Holy Spirit is in operation in your heart. And as James 5.25 says, that you stay in step with the Holy, or James, I'm sorry, Galatians 5.25 says you stay in step with the spirit okay so it's galatians 5 25 stay in step with the spirit because the spirit moves we need to be moving with it and if you're operating in in perfect harmony with the holy spirit that is what happens then is that jesus is at the father he's, he's asking the father and 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 he's going to do whatever whatever you ask right that happens because the Holy Spirit operating inside of you and because you are operating in step with the Holy Spirit it all works in perfect unison and perfect harmony with each other it's not I only do this if you do this it's more of this is what happens when you stay in step with the Holy Spirit when you love each other the way I ask you to love each other when you operate as the Holy Spirit is out when you operate this is what happens and it's a good possibility that this is why <laughs> We don't see things happening on earth the way the Bible says they could happen. It's because we are not operating within perfect harmony of the Holy Spirit. I can promise you I'm not all the time. I can guarantee you I'm not. All right? Because we're too sinful. We're too human. We're too distracted by all the junk in this world. Things happen. Obviously, yes. We are allowing the, the human things to interrupt the spiritual things. And what really should be going on is that the spiritual things should be interrupting the human things. And if the spiritual things, the Holy Spirit things, are, key, are breaking up the human things, the human things don't, op, don't, don't work as, the, as though the enemy would like for them to work, right? So we need to make sure that we are operating within, in unison with the Holy Spirit, in harmony with the Holy Spirit. Well, the, Jesus just said there that and I will do whatever you ask in my name. I asked for this. I didn't get it. <laughs> and that's a very, very good human argument. But again, it's a human argument. All right, James, the book of James, somewhere I forget the scripture passage, but it says that you, basically you grumble because you don't, you don't have what you want because you don't have because you don't ask. And even when you do ask, you're not asking with, with pure motives. So he's just saying, yeah, you don't have anything because you don't ask, you don't believe, he's also, you don't believe. Because you don't believe that when you do ask, you're going to get it. And when you ask, 
you're asking with impure motives. You're asking for greedy motives, for, for selfish motives. <laughs> because you're not operating in harmony with the Holy Spirit. Stay in step with the Spirit. Be in one. Be unison with the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit inside of your heart. If you're a born again Christian, believer in Jesus, you got the Holy Spirit inside of your heart. That's the only reason you can be born again, right? Is that the Holy Spirit is here and changed you, made you new. Well, just stay in step with the Spirit. You know, get close to God. Listen. Be still. I, don't act as the world acts, right? Your sin separates you from God. It just causes distance between you and God. It puts up a barrier it's, uh, between you and God. You know, and sometimes it's just laziness. You're just tired, whatever. World, the life's gotten to you. Hey, it happens. It happens to all of us. But we have to make sure that we are in perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. And if we are in harmony with the Holy Spirit and moving as He moves, doing what, he, doing what God wants us to do, listening and understanding, the, the side effects are amazing, <laughs> right? That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother sermon. I could go about half an hour. But um, that's what we need to do this week as we go about our lives is to understand that it all works right when the Holy, when we are when we are working with the Holy Spirit. All right. So I encourage you to do that this week. I encourage myself to do that this week. Thank you all for watching. If you have any prayer requests or comments, praise reports, whatever, leave them below for us. Love to hear for, from you and pray for you. My name is Jason, Art of Creation Homestead. We love you all. God bless you and goodbye.